we're, we're, we're both pretty uh, pretty wild in our in our styles, especially when the fight gets wild. Not everyone uh, sticks in it and, and, and just, just goes for it. And I think we're both going to do that. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Man, I was looking at, like, the places you've fought throughout your career. And it's only been three. Australia, the U.S., and Abu Dhabi. So going to Shanghai, yeah. going to China is something different. How do you feel about flying to... Uh, to Shanghai and getting into a fist fight. Oh man, it's it's pretty exciting, eh? I'm uh, I'm actually stoked because, like I said, I've only been to uh, the US uh, mainly. That's that's the main main part that I've ever been. And when I went to Abu Dhabi, that was in uh, the Fight Island in the in the COVID time. So <clears throat> there wasn't uh not not really as uh, adventurous uh, as as going to going to Shanghai. So I'm I'm pretty excited, man. Definitely, definitely. You're right, man. When you did go to Abu Dhabi, it was Fight Island, which means you're like in some bubble, isolated from the world, but fighting, you know what I mean? Competing, making money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. On the, on how, the how, did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was It was still pretty cool, um, especially because the whole world was locked down. Um, the whole world was shut down and then we were still able to, to go and compete. So it, that kind of felt special in itself, like going through the airports with like nobody in them. Um, it was it was a pretty pretty weird time, man. But it was still uh, still a pretty good experience. The worst part was uh, getting your nose, you know, molested. Basically, you know what I mean, like a hundred times. My my nose. Yeah, like they had the they were sticking the you know like back then. Remember they they were just sticking oh, the. the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what you meant then, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> sticking the, they, the, I swear they touched my brain when they'd stick that uh, <laughs> stick up there. And then uh, we had to do the weeks quarantine when we get back as well, so that sucked. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. None of that stuff yeah. happening nowadays, man. And and this is your fourth fight of the year. You know, were you expecting a fight this many times, or or was this just an early Christmas gift for you? Um, I guess a bit of both, because um. At the start of the year, I wanted, especially because I had my first fight in February, so it was it was looking good to um, get four fights in for the year, and that was my plan. Um, and then when there was a bit of a break between my first and second fight, because I had my fight in Feb, and then I fought in June, so I wasn't sure if I was going to get the four in. And then um, since no, uh, since I come out good from the last one, and then they. They made this quick turnaround. I was I was stoked. It was uh yeah, look at a early little early little Chrissy gift. Definitely, definitely, man. And uh Nasrat have, they're rebooking him, man, for you. You know what I mean? I think that this is a, a solid matchup. What do you think of a matchup and, and what do you think of his style? Yeah, uh, I think it's a good matchup, man. To be honest, I think we match up well and it's gonna be a, a good scrap. Um he comes to fight, I come to fight. Um he has like a high rhythm and tempo, um, pushes a, a high pace in his fights. Um, I do as well. So I think it will be uh, a, a very like fan favorite sort of fight to be, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's a, it might be like a sleeper fight. You know what I mean? People that know, they know, but the fans, when they w walk into the arena, they might not think anything of it. But once you guys start throwing hands, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, yeah, I think so too, man. I think it's uh, we're 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 both pretty uh pretty wild in our in our styles, especially when the fight gets wild. Not everyone uh sticks in it and 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 just just goes for it. And I think we're both going to do that, um, if it gets to that point, which I, I think it will. Yeah, you guys both <laughs> fought in Australia in Sydney for UFC two ninety three. And you guys both all went through uh, all 15 minutes. Did you get to speak with uh, uh, Dazrat in Sydney? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really speak to him. I did see him and I said, said g'day and I uh, just had a quick word with him. It's a quick hello. But uh, yeah, um, we, we, we both had some, some good fights, good hard fights on that night. So uh, yeah, it's good that he's been able to make the turnaround as well, I guess. And um, yeah, there's no like animosity. 
capacity and there's no bad blood or anything. I think we're just uh, two young, hungry fighters that are keen to get after it. Have you ever had bad blood? I don't really remember you having any type of issues with opponents. No, no, I, I honestly haven't. I? Um, I'm trying to think. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't say. <laughs> I'm a pro career. I've had bad blood with anyone. Are you? Do you want it one day? Like, do you want someone to come at you? You know what I mean? Because I know you, you're not really a type to engage in that too much, but, you know, it's fun sometimes. Yeah, it could be fun. I'm sure someone will. Uh, then mm -hmm. that's it. Like, it, it'll happen one day, and uh, we'll see how uh, how I react and how it, uh, how it pans out. But I, I guess I don't uh, do that shit because I'm not really a... Uh, like I'm, I'm more, I'm more of a quiet and uh, reserved guy. You know what I mean. I, I like to let my fists uh, do the talking and let my fighting do the talking. But um, yeah, we'll see. It could be fun one day. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And you know, Nasrat's last fight against Landon Quinones. What did you think of that performance? Did you get to watch it live or did you watch it later on? No, I didn't watch it live because he was the fight before me. So uh, mm -hmm. we, yeah, I, I, I've fought straight after so i was warming up but um i did watch the fight afterwards and uh yeah it was a good scrap man he uh he just pushed the tempo and um kind of smothered him and uh pushed it pushed a high pace uh which i'm expecting with me as well i'm expecting that with me um i just think that i've got a little bit more venom in my shots um so we'll see if he if he is able to press me like he did uh like he did that fight and yeah, it should be a fun fight. Yeah, and the same night, you, you had a fight against John McDessey. How was that whole experience? Yeah, good experience, man. Good experience to uh, go in there with, like, such a veteran. Um, John, John is a, a tough, tough customer, and, like, I think he only ever got stopped by a cowboy um, in the UFC, and that was when he, he got a broken jaw and still kept fighting. Um but yeah, man, they were, it was a good experience. Good for the skills and good for like my uh, confidence to to go in and and go fifteen minutes and and at his own game too. Um, kickbox with with John McDessie. He's, he's a great kickboxer. So got that that ring time, that experience, and um, yeah, it was good, man. Just good to uh, get that high level uh, competition against such a veteran. Yeah. And and going all fifteen minutes against like a veteran like John McDessie especially after coming off the last fight where you, you know, you felt really disappointed in yourself. How important was that? You know, sometimes getting an early finish doesn't really help you. You know what I mean? That experience, that 15 minutes against a high level guy will actually benefit you in the next couple of fights. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, that, that ring time is important, man, uh, especially in the, in the, you, uh, you hear about guys getting, um, that, that little bit of, uh, sort of stage fright and that I guess the, when it's in the big show and when it's in the UFC um, it's important to get that ring time man and especially against someone so experienced so and it, like I'm, I'm just learning um, more and more every time I get in there and just even even about the, like how I feel the lead up to it um, especially in the camps because um, I've been I've I've had uh, a fair few times now. Like I've had nine nine fights with the UFC now, and a couple of times, like I've just you know pulled the trigger a little bit too quick in my camps. Um, you know, but like uh, overtrained myself, not thinking I was doing enough. So even having four fights this year is just getting me in custom and in tune with my own body, my mind what I like to do before the fight, how, how the lead up goes. So that's all getting better as well. Yeah. I think uh, with fighters, that's the curse, right? That they feel like they're not doing enough. So they overtrain and then that affects them in the fight. Right. For sure. For sure. And, and it's just, uh, it's just that fighter mentality, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you need it, right? If you don't have it, then you're not going to be a fighter to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I say. It's like, uh, you, 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 <laughs> If you if you haven't overtrained yourself, it's something to worry about. But uh, you it, that's that's where it's good to have the people in your corner to pull you back and uh, make sure that you're doing the, doing things right. Definitely, and you know, going back to what I said about having four fights in one year, that means that 
you've been fighting pretty much every three months. So the camps have, have they shortened? Do you feel like you've, you know, like roughed out the edges? Um, not really shortened. Cause like, I, I guess I'm training hard year round, but the timing of, um, of when I'm pushing and when I'm, uh, when I'm just like peaking myself is, is getting a little bit better. Uh, the timing of that and then, um, just not burning myself out. So like mm -hmm. just, just things that we're doing in camp. Um, when the, but like I said, like I, I still have to get pulled back pretty much every time. Um, yeah. But yeah, you just, you just in your head going, fuck, I'm not going like, oh, I'll train harder, harder, harder. But it's, it's, it's good. It's just learning, you know, learning part of the process. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, um, with this camp, are, is it, are you doing the same, same kind of like split between freestyle and, and Central Coast? Or are you adding different things or different gyms or training partners? Uh, yeah, actually, I am a little bit um, just because I'm doing the, the base of my training. The majority is at, at home with uh, mm -hmm. my coach, with Ross Pearson um, at Central Coast MMA. Um, and I got, I'm going down to freestyle and sparring on uh, every every week. So it is a little bit of both. And then we're getting some guys um, up to our gym a little bit more ju just to make it less – Less travel, less uh, because freestyle gym is uh two and a half hours away, so it is a big trek to be going back and forth a lot. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just trying to like play it into work what's best for me, and uh, still obviously going down and getting that work in with them guys because it's uh it's just the the best sort of sparring that I get. Um, but we've got like I got Josh Cool about coming. He I just sparred rounds with him this morning, so. Josh come up to the gym. I uh, got some of the lines then guys coming up to the gym. So um yeah, we're getting good bodies, good good different looks uh from from a lot of high level guys. Oh yeah, man. That that two and a half hour drive is it's not fun for anybody, I don't think. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, especially in yeah, when you're training hard too. Yeah, your mental and your physical is like pretty uh pretty exhausted. So <laughs> not really a good idea to be driving that much. No doubt. How do you envision this fight, man? I look at Nazrat and I see John McDessey. They fought each other in the past. Nazrat beat him. But, you know, they kind of have a similar pace. You know, McDessey just kicks a lot more. Nazrat's more of a boxer. What do you envision against him? Uh, I envision a high-tempo fight. Um, like most of Nazrat's fights and my fights, they are usually a high pace and high tempo. Um it's going to be about who gets the who gets the respect, and that's what I'm going to look to do from from the first bell is get the respect and uh, control, basically control the pace of the fight and dictate uh, what happens in the fight too. So, um, with uh, with with how it goes, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to turn into a war. I really do. Yeah. That's what I'm. Preparing. Yeah, it's uh, definitely someone's getting a performance or or fight of the night in this one man I, I i see it yeah yeah let's hope man 100 percent. yeah yeah especially with the australia taxes <laughs> everybody talk shit about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 man uh it's gotta gotta be, gotta get the bonuses to cover the taxes right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um uh, a couple other topics man i wanted to pick your brain about the first one is um you're a mixed martial artist but what do you think about bare knuckle mma do you feel like that is the purest form of fighting? Maybe. Bare knuckle MMA, um, like the Valtudo, Valtudo stuff. Yeah, just like you know, Jorge Masvidal has his promotion, which is bare knuckle MMA. We just saw like Fabricio Verdun fight uh, Junior Dos Santos, right? Bare knuckle MMA. It's it's becoming yeah, a thing now yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, well, I, I guess if you want to talk about uh, the purest form of of fighting, then it, it probably would be like uh that bone on bone and it makes it different. Um, I think it's very similar with the little gloves. Like the only thing that the little gloves do is protect your hands a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, okay. Could be something, um, could be something even to look in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can see you, man. I can see you doing that. You're, you have that in you, you know what I mean? Like I see that you're, you know, you're like a fighter's fighter. Um, yeah. Now with, <laughs> <laughs> um now with uh 
with the time with the rounds right like this has become a topic now where you know i think dan hooker was talking about like how you should get rid of uh like uh rounds and just fight 15 minutes if it's a three rounder and right fight 25 minutes if it's a five rounder or a title fight what do you think which is better which is worse i love that i love that idea because then um you're not splitting the rounds and it's more of a more of a especially with the judges um like it's more of a, a a whole look on who won the, who won that fifteen minutes or who won that twenty five minutes, and um, I like that because there's just so many t- times where I've seen fights that could have been like you know yeah. saved by the bell, <laughs> saved by the like, and because that guy, even if if it, say one guy wins three minutes of that round or four minutes of that round. The guy gets the reversal at the end of the round. The guy on the bottom now is so tired and he's so exhausted. That's the time to, to strike, you know. And um, then when the time's up, the referee goes, no, nope, stop, stand up, go back to your corners. And it's like the fight has – it's like a new fight. Mm-hmm. So the fight has to start again. So I'd, I'd be all for um, no rounds and uh, just a, a straight 15 minutes uh, of fighting. That's I, I think that's a great idea. All right, and and the last thing is uh, USADA, man. You've been under the USADA, um, you know, umbrella, and now they're splitting with the UFC at the end of the year. How was your experiences with them? Uh yeah, gr- great. USADA's been uh, like the that they, they can show up at any time, and um, as long as you as long as uh, you just keep your whereabouts updated with them. And um, my experiences with them have been. And they've been fine. I've never had any any dramas. Uh, I don't like some things that I've heard about them waking fighters up. And um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you heard, but they, they woke Alex Volkanovski up the night before he, he defended his title against Max Holloway. That's, like, that's crazy. We're waking him up in the middle of his sleep um, the night before a title defense. So there's been some things like that that I've heard. But uh, my experiences have been great with them. Um, and I'm just hoping that that it like continues that way with the whoever takes over the anti-doping um because we got to keep the sport clean yeah. um I, I honestly think that there's enough guys that still uh find ways to cheat um because the cheaters are always one step out of the game so the the more we can keep the sport clean and uh keep those those guys out of it the better for sure for sure december 9th ufc fight night it's a Shanghai night with the hooligan. That's I think that's a shirt right there. It's a Shanghai night oh, yeah. with the hooligan. Jamie, always appreciate uh, the time and uh, all the best, man. Nah, thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. <laughs>